What's up, everyone? Welcome into the All 22 NFL podcast, the official podcast of the All 22 fantasy football platform. It is the only fantasy football game with full 53 man rosters, which includes offensive linemen, where you get to choose personnel packages and have access to PFF grading and advanced stats to make decisions each week. Ray, we're another week closer to the draft, man. We're getting so darn close. And today we're going to be talking about linebackers. But before we do, there was some breaking news this morning with Josh Allen getting a massive contract, $150 million with 88 guaranteed on an annual basis. That amounts to $30 million a year. This puts him right under Nick Bosa. Uh, previously, Brian Burns had taken that spot when he signed his deal with the Giants. Josh Allen just eclipsed that, no pun intended, uh, with hey. getting $9 million more a year uh, in total value, about uh, 1.8 million per year. So big contract for Josh Allen means a lot to the Jags. Tell me what you think. Yeah. Josh Allen all around is, is a fantastic player and super impactful, especially for that defense uh, in all 22. He's nothing short of a godsend really at the edge position performs very well. Uh, top eight in the most impactful category. So he's the eighth best graded pass rusher in the NFL uh, for 2023. Also has the eighth most hurries and was in on the third most sacks. So he was in on 19 sacks overall uh, last season in 2023. So he wasn't just being disruptive. He wasn't just uh, winning quickly and just getting hurries. He was actually finishing on the, on a lot of those plays as well. So he has been the total package for uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. He has evolved into that next level pass rusher and likely isn't talked about enough. So you mentioned uh, Brian Burns in the large contract. Uh, he signed recently with the, with the recent acquisition uh, from the Giants and such. So uh, Burns in those same categories, 22nd uh, overall grading as a pass rusher, was 53rd in hurries last season uh, with just 21 overall and then was in on nine sacks overall, uh, which is good for 26th in the league, which again, it's not bad for an edge rusher, right? But you see the difference in sort of the premier level uh, performance from Josh Allen versus that of Brian Burns. We discussed it during the Brian Burns episode too, when uh, we talked about the environment around Burns, uh, the situation there, not very conducive to playing to his strengths, given everything else going on with that team. So Burns definitely held back uh, quite a bit over there in Carolina, and we'll see how how he measures up in, in New York now moving forward. But overall, Josh Allen, a supremely talented player, is performing very well, well-deserving of this contract. And um, yeah, good to see him rewarded. Yeah, for sure. And it, we always talk about how the Jags are that team that has to like overpay sometimes for their talent, right? To retain talent because it is hard to keep people wanting to be a part of that organization. They did a great job with Josh Allen because I think there is a world where he ends up becoming the highest paid edge player with how well he's performed, right? And he is still so young. So really good for them too, right? To be able to retain a talent like Josh Allen. So uh, excited for him, excited for the Jags and and honestly, just exciting for the league and also edge value probably going up again. Yeah, this, this, the rich get richer, right? The, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So can't wait to finalize those positional weights coming up here in a bit. But um, yeah, good for Josh Allen. Well deserved. Cool. cool. Let's jump into the film review. I think you're starting off with Peyton Wilson, linebacker out of North Carolina. He is 24 years old come draft day, 6'4", 233-pound linebacker. He played 2,400 snaps with a run defensive grade this past year at 83.7, pass rush grade at 76.8, sure tackler at 90.6, coverage grade at 90.4, has 16 career sacks, seven interceptions, and 175 stops. At the combine, he showed up, ran a 4-4-3 with a 34.5-inch vert and a 9-11 broad. So this is a extremely productive, extremely well-seasoned linebacker. I'm excited to see what you have to say about his film. Yeah, I love Peyton Wilson. Basically, he would check every box if it weren't for concerns about his previous injuries. I think I think he's had over 10 surgeries uh, to his body already as a result of injuries uh, in college and, and maybe prior to college, who knows. Um, but the last two years of, of his college career, he was injury-free. He was, he was healthy. So what 
teams will end up doing with that. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see how that all shakes out. Uh, you know, again, we're, we're never really privy to the medicals here. Sometimes we hear whispers here and there, uh, but essentially that's the only thing that I think keeps him from a first round pick. Uh, we're going to just start off here. I think otherwise he is just solid all around better than solid in many areas as well. And I was actually surprised to hear he had so many surgeries because he kind of does a very good job of keeping himself clean uh, and not squared up on uh, from opposing blockers. So first play here, actually, we're just going to see he's, he's uh, uh, lined up to the boundary here. And we're just going to see him in coverage again, just getting depth, providing no window for the quarterback, Sam Hartman, to actually throw the football here. Kind of ho-hum, but... Again, really savvy. A lot of times linebackers will just get lost out in space here. You're going to see him come back on the screen and there's just no window for the quarterback to really fit that ball into because you have to get it over the backer and the, and the safety's playing over the top. There's just nowhere for him to go. I mean, the ball should just not have been thrown in that situation, but that's because Wilson takes that initial window away uh, by getting good depth in his drop. So something that seems simple, it's really not. It's really not. You can get lost out there in space. Um, so here again, just off ball, we're going to see uh, Peyton Wilson. Uh, and this is one thing where he covers a lot of ground, right? He came from the boundary side all the way to the the opposite uh, flat here and is chasing down the backer, but kind of over pursues a little bit, which you can see at times uh, doesn't always break down as cleanly as possible. And so you see here, he misses the initial tackle, kind of gets gets back up and and uh, finishes the play here with some help. But there is some over-pursuit that happens at times. Usually it's through contact, not necessarily in space. Um, but it is something where he can be a bit more consistent breaking down at times. Uh, and probably a side note here, I, I wanted to mention that I picked Notre Dame because it was probably his toughest game. Uh, with the, the amount of traffic they just sort of uh, just mucked up in the box there and threw at NC State was was different from most opponents that they saw this season. So I thought it was a really good tape to study to say this is pretty much his toughest test given their line and style. And he's still flashing uh, at times. So again, here we're going to see, uh, I have two low lights in a row as I'm praising him, but again, he gets squared up on here, which is actually rare, but I wanted to show it because when it does, he's not that like physical, huge body at linebacker, like a Rolando McLean or something where he can bounce off of blockers. If he gets squared up on, he will it, it he will have a tough time disengaging. Uh, but what you'll see for the most part is he's just he rarely gives more than a shoulder and maintains his gap integrity. So here he does a great job shuffling to the hole and then just making a great tackle here. You're going to see it from the other angle, uh, just how sort of easy he can move. When he is kept clean, he will find the ball. The plays just seem to open up for him and he can make a play. So you see uh, the, the, the pull from, uh, the right side of the line here, he's just going to follow that through naturally feels that hole open up. And then just with some help, just stuffs the play. So he's got a really good feel for things, uh, in the box. And then I would say this is my favorite play from Pey Peyton Wilson, but there's actually a better one in this game that I didn't include because I want you all to go and watch. Um, but so Peyton, Wil Peyton Wilson, just dropping into coverage here. Nobody really enters his zone. Uh, pass completion, and then he's just going to outrun corners and safeties 40 yards downfield to make the tackle. So, uh, I mean, this just this doesn't bust, okay? Players with this on tape do not bust in the NFL for anything other than injury concerns, perhaps. So this guy is all hustle. He is 100% all the time, all gas, no breaks. Uh, that's what you're going to get with uh, Peyton Wilson. And then I think the very last clip I have for you here, just an example of him keeping his body clean, especially on the edge. He's going to set the edge here. He's going to give just that inside shoulder. And uh, again, just kind of spin out of the additional contact here, string the play out, make the tackle for no gain. He's outnumbered here, uh, basically two blockers to one here, but he does such a good job of setting that initial edge uh, right here that he can then, as even more traffic sort of envelops here, he could just go ahead and string the play out further, keeps his body clean with the spin, and just basically mucks up that play all on his lonesome. So uh, Peyton Wilson pretty much gives you everything you can ask for. Uh, just, you know, like most linebackers, you got to keep him clean. He's not a 6'4", 250-something pound behemoth in the middle of the box there. But otherwise, he has everything you look for, and you just hope 
that the medicals and the injury history can kind of come back uh, with a clean bill of health moving forward. Cause that's really the only thing that could stop a very promising career in my opinion. Hmm. Uh, great football player, great football player. I'm going to save my comments. We're going to, we're going to talk about it for the audio okay. only people a little later, which means that the YouTube people thank you for, you know, watching this part of the segment, but you got to keep watching to be able to get, you know, the full take. So let's keep going. Let's watch the film. We're going to go next with Junior Colson out of Your Michigan. Boy. Another one of my boys. All right. Yeah. Junior yeah. Colson out of Michigan. He's 21 years old, 6'2", 238 pounds, played 1,900 snaps uh, in his career, has an 80 run defensive grade, a 60.7 pass rushing grade. He had a 90.2 tackling grade and an 83.4 coverage grade. Five career sacks, no interceptions, 89 stops. Did not uh, perform at the combine, so I don't have that information. But this is a just a really nice tracking in open space kind of linebacker. He's obviously a little bit smaller, uh, but his read and react skills are, are truly, really special. It is obviously helpful being a part of this Michigan defense where the guys in front of you are doing a great job. There's a bunch of second, third, fourth round picks around you, right? So you have so much NFL talent that I think he he definitely benefited from that, right? It, it was helpful for him when you're, you know, you have clean tackles to make instead of having two guys hanging on you because you're the sole threat of the defense. That is obviously a big uh, kind of part of Colson's play here. And honestly, yeah, just coming from the easy situation, uh, don't know about his strength, don't know about him as a run defender in the NFL, even though he created nicely in college. But let's get into the film. First play of the game is a run to the outside. Wide receivers are in triangle. The reason I wanted to show this one is because right there, that receiver that at the top of the triangle that's engaging Colson is Roma Dunze, right? I don't care how good of a receiver prospect you are. <laughs> as a linebacker, you cannot get driven five yards off the ball by a wide receiver. That's just unacceptable. It was the first play of the game. It's not a good way to start, in my opinion. You're at the 30. You're a linebacker. You didn't fight through that receiver to make a play on the football. To me, that's a problem. Definitely concerning. The next play happens really fast, so you can actually just let it run, and then we'll watch it from the second angle. Uh, Colson does a really, really nice job on this play because, again, I said he can stay clean at times, right? So 25 here. He works through so much muck and chaos, stays clean, keeps his vision, tracks the football, and makes a really nice play on the ball here. This is what you want to see from a vision standpoint. Again, he's able to be kept clean because he is playing for this great Michigan defense where he's not the primary concern, right? So he is not what people are going out of their way to make sure that he does not get a uh, hand on the football. He stays clean. He makes a great play. Can't knock him for it. Uh, again, just good vision on the play. Love to see that for Colson. And then Colson's main strength to me is his ability to – uh, spot, get to his spot quickly in coverage. He does an excellent, excellent job of that. And here he does it, uh, dropping into the curl zone and getting in the way so that Penix has to try to throw. You showed a similar clip for Wilson. Uh, watch him, you know, just get really quickly to his zone. He knows exactly where he's supposed to be. He's right underneath this route, goes up to try to deflect, right? He can't get a hand on it, but he's in such a good position that Penix has to overthrow, ends up leading to an interception. I think that interception is due to Colson. Great job on this play. Uh, it's it's exactly what I want to see from a lighter linebacker, right? His ability to drop into coverage and help make, make plays in that area. Then last play on film is a little bit of it's a is a little flat and a little late on a run play. I see that consistently in run for Colson. His feet are flat. He's slow to react, but he, you know, he, he's quick enough, he's athletic enough to recover. But this is a concern to me at the NFL level, right? You just can't have flat feet. You can't just be waiting there in your spot for a play to appear and form. You need to react. You need to read it quicker. He doesn't do that here. Again, he makes a nice tackle, but he does get a running back hitting him in the face. Again, a linebacker taking that hit on, losing a couple extra yards because he's getting run over. It's because his feet were flat, right? And he was late to react. At the next level, he's going to have to do better to stay on the field consistently on early downs. But all in all, this is a really good prospect. Uh, We'll talk about where we have him later, but uh, yeah, that's that's what I got on Colson. All right, Junior Colson. I guess I'm saving mine for uh, the audio only at, at, at the second half of this episode, huh? You're saving it. So we're going to go right, right on to Edger and Cooper, right? Edger and Cooper out of Texas A&M, 22 years old, 6'2", 230 pounds. I only have his 2023 numbers. 
For some reason, the earlier ones weren't available. So in 2023, he played 609 snaps with an 87.6 run defensive grade, 86.4 pass rushing grade, 73.7 tackling grade, 85.5 coverage grade, had 10 sacks last year, no interceptions, 56 stops. And at the combine, he showed up around a 4.51, 34.5 inch vert, 9.10 broad. Uh, so go ahead, jump in. Yeah, so we're going to start right off here. I think it's it's a good uh, segue here, and, and this was actually unintended, but we talked about and showed a couple of examples of linebackers dropping back in coverage, finding their zone, and either plastering to a man or just disrupting uh, the window for the quarterback, right? Edrin, uh, Edrin uh, I knew I was going to do that and say Edrin James. Edrin Cooper, I'm just going to call him Cooper, uh, is – clearly athletic enough to be very effective in zone coverage and in man coverage for that matter too. Um, very athletic, but that feel we're going to see is not quite there all the time. So the very first play here, if I have my uh, order of plays correctly, he's going to drop into his zone, right? He's going to uh, similar thing here, right? The hook curl. He's not going to feel it. There's, there, there's no one there. He does not plaster at this point right here uh, where the tight end just kind of gets to his outside shoulder, just kind of finds the blind spot and allows for an easy completion from the quarterback. You want your backer here to, to plaster. There is nobody threatening his zone. Nobody's coming across here. Just sink, just sink underneath this. Or if you were getting more depth, you would have a good vision for this break and then could uh, make a play on the ball. But he just kind of drifts a little bit doesn't plaster and it's an easy play for the quarterback. This is why people yell at their TV at zone coverage is because you don't plaster or don't get enough depth to see the routes develop and then make a play on the ball. Cooper sometimes shows that lack of feel in, in coverage at that point. So uh, just, just one thing to note again, after seeing guys like Wilson uh, and even Colson kind of make life a bit of a living hell for the quarterback, just because of that, extra detail and feel for the game in zone that matters quite a bit. So uh, we just saw him pointed out here. Uh, this is him dropping back uh, into uh, deep coverage here. And again, this is the athleticism we spoke about when he sees the route in front of him and it does cross his zone. He's athletic enough to completely erase it and take it away. He's not uncomfortable at all deep down the field. And yeah, that, that's exactly what you want to see. And then he can, you know, go ahead and I guess help out his buddies there as, as he forces a quarterback scramble. So, the athleticism is there. The speed to cover at all three levels of the defense is there. You just want to see a bit more of that feel. Here he is uh, lined up uh, in the box here, and I just love this here. Jalen Milrow, you know, scrambling quarterback, can make a lot of things happen with his legs. Uh, they they run a little uh, read option here, and he's just going to completely take that away. You're not going to just uh, you know get a numbers advantage with a quarterback run or something against someone like Edron Cooper. He can completely shut that down because he is athletic enough uh, to do so. So it's a great uh, asset, and we're going to see it again here. Uh, he's going to be spying uh, Milrow here. So Milrow is going to jump out of the pocket, and then he's just going to go ahead and trigger quickly downfield and go ahead and make – the tackle. So again, just a phenomenal job of corralling a mobile quarterback, which can be the Achilles heel to any defense, right? That is so tough to stop. And then you're going to see from this angle here, lined up outside of right tackle. Uh, again, a just spy, spy, spy. Once he rolls out of the pocket, boom, trigger downfield inside out. That's just, that's just absolutely textbook. So when he is able to be an athlete, he's, he's phenomenal. He could just flash the athleticism all day. If you can keep him clean and he can see things in front of him, he's going to make a good play. So then here he is uh, in, in the box. And again, he was kept clean by his defensive line, was able to just shoot uh, shoot the gap and make a play in the backfield. Similar to most linebackers, and again, Peyton Wilson, if someone is squared up on him, going to have a bit of a tough time disengaging. But if he's kept clean, he's going to make plays in the backfield and make them in a hurry because he is that plus athlete. So I think this is that same play uh, from the end zone angle here. Yep, kept clean. Uh, shuffle, go ahead, make the play, no gain. So again, he flashes the athleticism and the gifts that he has. Just not quite the same feel as maybe someone like a Peyton Wilson does for being in space downfield. But if you're giving him assignments that say, hey, go ahead and take away this, this quarterback run. Go ahead and be an athlete. Go ahead and take this deep zone. Uh, run with this uh, slot, either tight end down the field, up the seam, or the slot receiver, he can go ahead and do that for you. 
that's that's the the superpower to Cooper's game and why some people do have him above someone like a Peyton Wilson as the LB one in this class, which we'll talk a bit more about. Um, but yeah, that's that's Edge Cooper in a nutshell. Edge Cooper, good football player, another good football player, but I'm going to save my takes. Let's jump <laughs> right into Tommy, my boy Tommy. This is my boy, Tommy Eichenberg, who is a 23-year-old linebacker out of Ohio State, 6'2", 233 pounds, played 1,800 snaps on his career, 66.6 run defensive grade, 65.2 pass rushing grade, 79.7 tackling grade, 52.7 coverage grade, five sacks, two interceptions, 132 stops. At the combine, 46940, 32.5 inch vert, 98 broad, and a 424 shuttle. I think for Tommy Eichenberg, one thing to point out, those those PFF grades probably are pretty underwhelming for everyone. And I obviously recognize that, but I think he is a better football player than those grades give him credit for. Uh, this is just again, this is a good football player, and he plays his role very well. Some some of the toughest things to do as a linebacker is know what you're meant to be doing on every single play because linebacker is one of those positions where kind of like tight end, you have multiple responsibilities that other positions just don't have that you know misfortune of having to deal with, right? So whether you're stepping up as a run defender and you know engaging on blockers, whether you're dropping into coverage and guarding somebody man to man, or you're blitzing, right? Like there's a lot that linebackers are asked to do, and it's it's not easy. Um he knows what he's meant to be doing on every play and his traits are average, right? So it's not like he's he's going out there and just doing an amazing job every single play, blowing things up, doing special things that that blow you away. It's not, it's not that at all with Tommy, but he's just a good football player that knows what he's meant to be doing. Um, yeah, so just jumping into it. And oh, one more thing, right? Brother of Liam Eichenberg. So he has NFL lineage. His brother is a offensive lineman for the Dolphins. Hasn't really panned out so far in the NFL, but, you know, has been a spot starter from time to time for them. So again, just, it is in his blood to be this level of an athlete. So that's always promising to see. First play I am showing you is a design uh, blitz that just works out really well. He is the top linebacker lined up over the guard tackle in between the guard tackle. And he just, you know, at the snap, he is shooting and basically gets through clean. If I am Notre Dame's coach, that guard just whiffing, and just running past him, I am sitting that dude down and having a long talk with him. Tommy does a great job shooting this gap, finding the ball carrier, and just making a nice tackle, right? Love to see that. That is an NFL running back that he is tackling. Uh, again, just does a really nice job with his assignment, uh, but it was a great play call too. Next play, uh, Tommy is, I just want to point out, Tommy is by no means kind of like a natural coverage linebacker that's not his bread and butter. But again, he knows his responsibilities, and that is especially true in zone coverage. He gets to his spots, right? And that's exactly what he does here. Just dropping under this route that uh, Sam Hartman wanted to throw to uh, as that kind of like slot player goes into a post. Tommy's calling out things pre-snap, right? He's that kind of a leader, but he's just clouding that, right? And uh, Hartman has to roll out, throw it into the flat, and, and Eichenberg rolls out with it and ends up helping out on a really nice tackle. And... He's also, just like he's not a natural cover one linebacker, he's also not really a natural blitzer. Uh, but it's something that he does, and he knows his responsibility, and he does well. I think one of his strengths in the blitzing game is he disguises it really well. I don't think the offensive linemen often see it coming, and that's the case here. Tommy uh, hides it really well, ends up shooting the gap, basically gets through clean, and at the last second, a guard, you could hit play. A guard gets a hand on him, pushes him. And he just doesn't keep his composure a little bit reminiscent of the film we showed you last week with Trice. You got to be able to keep your composure. got to stay stronger than that when you're blitzing, but at least Tommy does a nice job of hurrying the quarterback, right? Hartman is obviously shook and gets rid of the ball quickly. It's an incompletion. So Tommy technically does his job on this play. Good play. Last play. Just want to reinforce how good Tommy is at his assignments, right? And this is a really kind of, again, like a mucky kind of play where it forces Tommy to see everything naturally, stay square, keep his keep his composure, do his job, and that's what happens. So it's a run. I think it might be a toss to the outside going uh, to the top of your screen. Tommy sees it, reads it, and stays flat, right? Engages the blocker, but keeps his arms so he has leverage so that he can disengage and help on this tackle. Watch him just stay perfectly even with the running back, right? That entire sequence, he was perfectly even with the running back engages the blocker, gets off, and helps out on this tackle. 
That's exactly what you want, right? That is that is why I am willing to invest a pretty early round pick on a linebacker that might not have had the grading in college, right? It's because of plays like this, because I could plug him in and I know he's going to do his job. It's a good football player. You seem to think we have a lot of good football players in this linebacker class. Because I'm seems. saving all of my other takes. <laughs> Player. And when you're when you're watching linebackers, that's 90% of what you're gonna say. You're gonna be like, that's a good lot, that's a good football player right there. Right? He knows how yeah. to tackle. He's not gonna he's not gonna get dragged by running back. Yeah, it's a good football player. Sure. Good football player. He's a good football player. We can we can get into our takes whenever you want to do the transition, I guess. But yeah, he's a good football player. We're gonna transition right now. So audio only people, thank you for tuning in. If you didn't watch the first half on YouTube, you can go watch us break down the film of the top linebackers of this class. Ray, I think there's kind of a reason we only reviewed four. We've been doing like five, six, seven for each position. Linebacker, we did four. Is there something with this class that we decided to do that? For me, at least, I don't know how deep this class is. I don't know how good this class is. I'm not even thinking this is a top-heavy class. It's just, it's just like at least average, maybe even a little worse than that. Yeah, I would say it's below average. It's it's a class that you have a couple late day one, early day two type guys. You have a couple day two type guys. That's about it. Uh, you know, then you have you know a sprinkle of a couple day three guys that don't really stand out amongst you know the the rest, and and that's it. There's. Yeah, we talk about all the star power you see at wide receiver and at offensive tackle in this class, and some of the boomer bust at a at a position like tight end. But linebackers just it's just kind of there. There's no there's no freakazoid at the top of the position that is just a you know no brainer just physical uh, specimen type of player that's going to go in the top fifteen. And there's no heavy set or dose of depth in in day two either. It's just it's just a class that's just kind of there. And it's, I don't know if it's a byproduct of what we always say about how the linebacker position is just under attack in, in today's era of football with how offenses are designed and, and such to where, I don't know, there's only so few humans that can be 240 ish pounds and above and hang with the speed and space type of offenses that we see, but also be stout enough against the run and be sound tacklers in the box. It's, it's a very tough ask of any backer, of any player, and maybe that's just what we're seeing, or I'm just making a whole lot out of what's just a down cycle in a in a position group. I, it, it, who knows? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I do think this is a trend. I mean, I obviously really liked one of the guys last year, uh, Jack Campbell, who ended up going in the first round to the Lions. I think he was kind of that special linebacker. Besides him, I think it's been a few years since we had a good group of linebackers in a draft. And I think you're right. I think it's, it's very difficult to play the position. I also think when you're Peyton Wilson, right. And you're six, four, I think there are a lot of players like that, that are going to say, I can add 20 pounds and go make a lot more money playing on the edge. Right. Or I can, or, you know, I'm not good enough of an athlete to go play safety or corner. Right. So it's like, I'm stuck playing linebacker. Maybe, you know, I don't want to say they're the leftovers, but it's like, if you're not big enough, strong enough to play edge and you're not fast enough to play corner, you're going to be a linebacker, right? And and if you're of that, that size and you're really a special athlete, you're probably playing tight end or running back, right? So it's like, this is, this is a little bit of the group of guys that gets left over in today's NFL just because of the way they're paid, the way that their careers end up going, right? It's not, it's kind of, it's a little bit more like running back where Linebackers don't last 15, 20 years. They're, they're, it's very rare that a Bobby Wagner survives in the NFL that long. So I do think it's an outcome of that as well. And, you know, I think the number one guy, you mentioned Peyton Wilson as a guy that if the injuries weren't, you know, previously there, you would have no problem taking the first round. You know, watching his film for me, I don't know if I saw that, right? I think he's, I do think he's the number one linebacker in this group, but he reminds me a lot of Drew Sanders last year. Like there's a lot of that to his game where this is a I really like Drew ins- Sanders. <laughs> I like Drew Sanders too, but he was a third round pick, right? He went yeah. third round to the Broncos and didn't necessarily have a super productive rookie season. He was okay, but he wasn't super productive. I don't even know if he got all that much time, right? So like just because you're instinctual at linebacker doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be an absolute stud in the NFL. I think, 
Peyton Wilson's movements looked a little stiff to me. He looked a little robotic. I think similar to Drew Sanders, they're a little long, and sometimes that makes their movements look a little long and not not necessarily smooth and athletic as you know some of the other linebackers, especially in this class, look. And you know, Jack Campbell last year. So for me, I like Peyton Wilson as my number one in this class. But to me, it's like I I at earliest I'm taking this guy as an early second round pick. Part of the reason I say that too is because. Like I like other guys in this class where I'd rather spend a fourth round or a fifth round pick on some of the other guys in this class, right? Like, am I really getting that much added value by taking Peyton Wilson early second as opposed to uh, Tommy Eichenberg in the late third or early fourth, right? And I think that's kind of the conversation that needs to happen. But again, so for me, Peyton Wilson is number one. I have him as an early second round pick. Drew Sanders is my comp. And I think the last thing to just mention all 22 era, I have him as my 10th. So right after Drew Sanders, Leo Chanel, it's Peyton Wilson, right? Right before N'Kobe Dean and Devin Lloyd. Uh, Again, 10 means he's a good linebacker, but it just hasn't really been a strong position where I even like, I don't love some of the guys that are even above him, right? Like it's like, there's maybe I'm looking at this. (laughs) It's like there are four (laughs) guys in my all 22 era that I'm really confident in. And that's it. Everybody else, it's like, they could be okay. And that's kind of how I feel. But tell me what you think. Well, you said a name that that resonated with me, and it's a little bit scary, and N'Kobe Dean, who absolutely loved coming out of Georgia. I was smitten with him. I thought he could do everything on tape. He was just you know a couple inches shorter than everybody would like, but everything else was there. But he also had some injuries, and then in the NFL, that's just been the story. And with Peyton Wilson, he's had a ton of injuries, healthy for a couple of years. Is he going to stay healthy or is that going to be the story of his NFL career? Because he's already had more than 10 surgeries on his body, which is insane for a, what, 22 year old uh, player. So um, 24 year old to come draft day, 24. There you go. So he's, so he's an older prospect probably because he's had 10 surgeries on his body. Um, and that will probably force you to stay in college quite a bit before you can put some tape out there to go to the league. Um, so it's, it's definitely a risk. I, I like, I think he's less raw than someone like Drew Sanders was who I, who I loved uh, last year, but kind of, I think if we rolled back the tape, I would, I, I did say, Hey, Drew is, I'm not taking for what he is in year one. I, I, I think there's a lot of upside there, um, but that's going to have to be worked on. I think uh, Peyton Wilson is closer to his ceiling. I think he's a, a high floor type of player on the field in the sense that you see the hustle and the feel for the game to where even if he doesn't ever become an elite player that maybe plays up to the testing numbers of the combine or what have you, because people get all excited about that. Um, he's still going to be a solid starter at the very least for you. And one of the better linebackers in the league. But again, there's that black cloud about his health and how that uh, that'll ultimately shake out. So there's risk there. There's a lot of risk there. If you were to assume a clean bill of health, though, I still would have him probably like 25 to 32 ish range. Um, just because I'm, I think I'm a little lower on some of the end of first round type of players too, than most other people are in this class. So that probably plays a part in it too, but agree. If we're talking about him as our linebacker one, it's dicier than most years at linebacker one. And it's not necessarily his fault. I mean, it's just unfortunate, but injuries are a thing and, and that can can contribute to some of the things that you might see on tape when you say, ah, it looks a little stiff here. The movements aren't quite as well. If you've been operated on 10 times, the, the parts, you know, the parts aren't as good as their original, right? So you're going to have some of that. Uh, you're going to sap some of that movement. So um, yeah, it, it, it all kind of goes back to what we think about this linebacker class where we like the best guy, but we don't love the best guy. And there's just, there's, there's some, there's some risk to it. Sure. I, I think I would feel more confident if this was a 21 or 22 year old prospect that I could say, you know what, he needs 10 pounds of muscle. And I think I could get there. But when you're 24, I don't know if there's 10 pounds to add to this guy. Right. And I think it's a little bit of that. Like if you're your primary trait is that you're just very instinctual. That's that's a great trait to have at linebacker. Don't get me wrong. But like you should probably be a 245 to 250 pound linebacker not a 230 pound coverage linebacker. Right. So a little bit of a concern there, but okay. You tell me, I gave you my number one first. I want you to tell me your number two. My two is edge Cooper. 
There was uh, early on, I kind of debated if I wanted Cooper to be my, my number one or not. and kind of going back and forth, but ultimately I think Wilson state was a bit better because of his feel for the game. I have Cooper number two. The ceiling is higher with Cooper. I think you see the flashes in coverage uh, when he has to run down the scene with somebody, he does it effortlessly, right? And in today's NFL, uh, some of the best offenses have those, you know, those tight ends running down the seam and, and all across the field. You think of the Lions, you think uh, the Chiefs is more so just finding empty space in the zone and such, which that's going to be something that someone like Cooper struggles with on tape. Uh, but when it comes to running with guys uh, down the middle of the field and taking that away from the offense, Cooper does that so well. He's so athletic that when there are some quarterbacks that present mismatches for opposing defenses, he can erase that, right? If Jaden Daniels is lined up uh, on the opposite, you know, on the opposite sideline and, and, and they're both on the field. I mean, Cooper is the type of linebacker that can erase that advantage that, Daniels gives the offense with his legs because Cooper's just as athletic. He can track him down. He can kind of put the clamps down on that rushing attack from the quarterback position. We saw that against Alabama and Jalen Milrow as well. So that's an element to Cooper's game that some linebackers, no matter what, just cannot bring to the table. Just They just don't have that athleticism and that pursuit and that closing speed that Cooper has. So he's rougher around the edges than some of the other backs uh, backers in this class, but the ceiling is there. And in today's NFL, you kind of need some guys like that in your defense, because again, you're going to be over the course of an NFL season, oppose op opponents are going to throw a lot at you. You need to be ready for that. And, and Cooper brings something that other linebackers just can't. So I have him as my number two firmly. Yeah. I had the same kind of conversation with myself where I was considering him as the number one and it's, Really funny because there was a player last year that like I I compared Peyton Wilson to Drew Sanders from last year, but there's a player Edron Cooper plays like, and that's that's Henley who was drafted last year. Yeah. Um, because they're both like these very nasty hitters, patient and explosive, Swiss Army knife players, but they're small. Like and and to me in today's NFL, the best linebackers are are really not that little, right? And they they can do. Uh, a lot more against the run. I think Cooper lacks a little bit in his tackling ability. Um, so for that reason, I had him comfortably behind Wilson. Uh, but this is a really good football player. I love watching film on Cooper because like, that's what football is all about, right? Is watching some nasty dude go run around and just wreck people. And Edger and Cooper can be that guy. I think a lot of teams are going to fall in love with Cooper. Um, he's a really fun prospect. I have him just after Wilson in terms of like draft rank, I have him as mid second round guy. There's a chance that both of them end up going later than I'm saying. I, I think that's a realistic possibility, but if it's me, it's my decision. I'm taking him as a mid second round guy. And then in the all 22 era, I had Wilson at 10. I had Nicobe Dean at 11, Devin Lloyd at 12, I had Edron Cooper at 13, right above Patrick queen and Henley from last year. So you know, he did make my all 22 list. He's the last one of this year's class to do it. So I have two guys, which is, I'd say, a little bit below average. But he, he's a really fun prospect, somebody to like, and somebody you should be happy if your team decides to take. Don't be surprised if he goes higher than you think. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> Don't be surprised if he goes higher. It's it's funny you say that, right? It's like the Packers did that a few years ago, taking, um, I'm trying to remember his name. It's killing me. Old dude. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Not old dude. He, he killed not him. old dude. The dude that's gotten thrown out of two games. Um, as yeah, a yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's not old. Anyway. Don't put me on the spot. I'm, I'm going to remember his name. <laughs> I'm going to shout it out. But yes, I yeah, know exactly please. what you're talking about because I had him on my all 22 team and I got sick and tired of him getting A, thrown out of games and B, just having really low lows. Uh, so, right. Yeah. And, and like I, Cooper yeah. is kind of that player right yes. so like you're right like there's there's a chance that out of left field some team just says that's the guy i want he's gonna fit quay into walker my quay walker exactly yeah like edger could be lows. that type of, could totally be that type of player that gets taken early just out of nowhere i don't think it happens i'm gonna be completely honest i don't but okay. i guess it could okay my number three <laughs> is tommy eichenberg and it is a climb up the charts for him for me and it took it really took me watching that Wisconsin game. We showed the running back highlights for Brandon Allen earlier. And Tommy Eichenberg made a couple of plays in that where I was like, I need to go back and watch some more of this guy. So I did, right? And 
I really liked what I saw. This is, again, like just a very instinctual, but a guy that knows his role. And and like we talked about Edron Cooper. Edron Cooper's not that, right? Edron Cooper's a little slow. He hesitates. He's he's not a sure tackler. He doesn't always get perfectly to his spots, but he's just so explosive. Eichenberg's like the opposite kind of player. But in today's NFL, not every linebacker is going to be this great player. And like we talked about Quay Walker, you'd rather them not be a liability for you. Tommy Eichenberg is not going to be a liability. He's going to be just a very trustworthy, reliable linebacker that you could plug in and who's going to do a good job for you. Saying that, to me, like he's definitely in the third to fourth round conversation, meaning like mid third and after. But in today's NFL, that's kind of when linebackers are going. So I don't think that's a knock on Eichenberg. Again, good football player. Um, obviously didn't make my all 22 list. Where did you have Tommy? So this is where it gets crazy. So before I get that, so I'll start, <clears throat> I think to summarize, right? So the first two linebackers that we mentioned, uh, Cooper and, and uh, Wilson, Wilson, all 22 rookie drafts, for example, right? We're, we're talking about these guys in like the thirties and forties, right? Maybe late twenties. So again, you're thinking uh, third, fourth, maybe early fifth round in your all 22 rookie drafts, for example, right? I think, that delineation now, anything after that, we're talking guys in like the sixth or seventh round or undrafted at this point, very late in your rookie draft, because now we're talking uh, later second round, third round and beyond. You're beyond the top uh, 60, 70 players at that point. And so, you know, seven round rookie drafts, you're, that's right around where you tap out. Uh, this is where it gets crazy. And this is why you always reference your all 22 era rankings and your rankings uh, more than I do is because three, four, and five for me, actually three, four, five, and six for me, you could just throw them in a hat. I go back and forth all the time. I think my number three is Eichenberg as well, but I don't like la like lack of explosion in my, in my players, period. Like that's one of my things is I, sometimes I always go back to, okay, my, I anchor back to bigger, faster, stronger. You just put a team of those guys together. It's going to do really well, right? Eichenberg is not necessarily that he's more sound, uh, you know, read, react, uh, not make a big mistake type of player. And when I watched him, I liked him a lot. I would say he probably leads the pack for my third uh, linebacker spot as well. I couldn't quite make out why his grades were poor. And I couldn't quite make out why a lot of Ohio state fans seems to really not like him. Like they hated him. Like he was there like whipping boy on defense and I couldn't quite figure out why I was like, okay, he's not a freak athlete, but I'm not seeing why you hate this guy. He hmm. didn't live in the backfield or anything, but he was, he was fine. So I was, I was trying to wrap my head around all this stuff. It wasn't quite adding up. I think he's a sound football player and that linebacker. Uh, Bobby is the biggest proponent of this, right? Is you just, you just keep throwing ish at the wall at linebacker because it is so volatile because of the way that NFL offenses attack these guys that you just got to take a bunch of shots there and see what lands. And Eichenberg is the type of shot that, you know, if, if you take a whole bunch of shots of the same type of archetype of player, athletic, long, whatever, and you have a bunch of Jamin Davises who haven't graded well to date, then what are you really doing, right? You have a bunch of Patrick Queens before Roquan Smith was next to them to make them a good player. You're not going to, you're not winning many games. So I think I would have Eichenberg as my third as well, but he's so different from some of the other guys in the conversation. So like if I were to, to transition to what I think is my linebacker four, who we actually didn't get into Trevin Wallace He's a complete opposite type of player in the sense that he's very athletic. He's very long, uh, kind of similar to Cooper in the sense that he can kind of cover a lot of ground quickly, but boy, he overruns a lot of plays. He breaks down very inconsistently. He's got a lot of flashes, but is not sound at all. So they're two completely different types of players. It's just a matter of, okay, how are these guys going to be deployed in the NFL? Can Wallace clean up? some of the edges around his game to where if he does his ceiling is that much higher than Eichenberg and he can be much more impactful. Do you take that shot or do you go with the more sound sort of uh, technical is not going to win you, but he's not going to lose you your, your all 22 weekly game either in someone like Eichenberg to me, it just depends on, I guess the rest of your roster. 
And it's just what you're looking for, which is why I, I think I have Eichenberg third, but depending on what you're looking for, one is the clear option over the other. It just depends on need at that point. Hmm. So I, I didn't even watch him, so I don't I don't have an answer for that. But I can tell you, watching Eichenberg, one of the things that I could understand being frustrated with is because he plays so much assignment-based football, it's get to the spot, but it's not always try to win, right? So like he will get to his spot, but if there's an engaging blocker, he's kind of done, right? Like he's not getting off the blocks that easily and he's not making special plays left and right. It's, I know where I'm supposed to be. I'm going to fill the hole. But once somebody gets their hands on me, there's probably going to be a lane next to me because I'm not big, strong, fast, explosive enough to to get off, right? And I think that's the biggest issue I have with Eichenberg's film, which is understandable and understa- understandably frustrating for fans when you're talking about spending an early pick. That's why, like you mentioned, in an all-22 fantasy draft, this is, in my opinion, a seventh-round pick earliest. Like, I think there are two linebackers that you take in this draft, Peyton Wilson, Edgerin Cooper, and after that, it's maybe Eichenberg in the seventh, and that's it. Because, like you're saying, it's a dart throw at a board. You have no idea what kind of player you're getting unless you're the best dart player in the world. Um, it's it's really a gamble, right? And in the NFL, I do think there's a lot of value to having a guy that's a 60 grader, right? They say in PFF grading, 60 is you are average, right? So that's, to me, it's Eichenberg getting to a spot is kind of like the minimum. It's it's what you're meant to do. If you win, you grade positively from there. If you lose, you grade negatively. He doesn't win or lose. He just does his job, right? And that's more often than not the case for him. And that's why I think his grading is what it is. Um, four for me was uh, Junior Colson out of Michigan, right? We talked about him. The reason being is one, his grading was phenomenal. So I think there's something to that. You can't just ignore it. And two, I think he can be a very promising coverage linebacker. And I think you could get him in the fourth round. So if you're like in an NFL draft and in free agency in an all 22 draft, and if you're telling me that Edgerin Cooper is also more of a coverage linebacker at almost an identical size and junior Colson is a year younger graded better and just doesn't look as explosive on film, but they do pri- like primarily the same things. Give me Junior Colson in the fourth or as a free agent in all 22, right? And I'm going to take that over spending a high draft pick on a position that is super volatile and doesn't really pan out that often, right? So I think there's the value aspect that you have to start putting into this. So that's my four. Um, five for me was Cedric Gray, North Carolina. Uh, again, just like more of this kind of coverage linebacker sized player, but didn't blow me away in any regard. Right. And I have him as this late fourth, early fifth round player in an NFL draft, again, a free agent in all 22, but a pretty good football player all around. And it's somebody, again, I would rather take Cedric Gray in the fifth than Edrin Cooper in the second. So that's just my opinion. Do you, do you see it the same way? Cedric Gray scares me, but I wonder, cause I watched Cedric Gray and I'm like, I don't think he's very well coached. I just didn't think he was very well coached. And I was like, I wonder if there's more there. Um, and you know what? I say that a lot, a lot of North Carolina defenders, actually, you could, you could probably say that about to be, to be frank. Um, so there might be more there with Cedric Gray, but you couldn't really see it. So I, he's just in the dart throw category. What's the age of Colson and Cooper? Yeah. I think you said them earlier. Are they the same age? Colson that might be, that might be the differentiator Cooper? for me. I feel like most of that Michigan defense was like 23, 24. So who knows? No. Yeah. So Cooper by draft, it will be 22. Colson will be 21. Nice. Okay. So that, that might, that might be it. That might be it. I, I, I do think um, I agree with your take, right? I'm, Cooper's looks a little more explosive on film and that's what kind of got him to LB two for me is that explosion. And not many people have that. Um, but again, when you talk value wise and, and you're considering other spots there, if you have multiple needs, yeah, probably a better value to get Colson much later than someone like Cooper. You got Colson three, four rounds later in all 22 draft and, you know, one to two rounds later in, in the actual NFL draft. That's, that's a big difference. So I see the value play there. Um, the only other guy I want to, I want to highlight, of course, is my boy, Curtis Jacobs, where he's essentially your typical off ball outside, you know, Sam backer. Uh, but he can blitz very well, fine in coverage, 
fine in the box. They moved him uh, in the box a bit more later in his career at Penn State, and and he wasn't as successful in the box as as they had hoped, I, I think. And so he kind of cemented himself as like an outside player, just an off-ball outside backer who can run in space, can hit in space, and can blitz. Those are all perfectly fine things, right? But if the opponent does sort of muddy things up in the box, he's not the best at working through a lot of that traffic. So I think he's the type of player in the NFL who's probably going to get drafted day three, probably round four, if I were to guess, round four or five, late, fifth the latest. I think he's it's a very good value in the fifth. Um, but I think he's going to be a starter in this league for, for several years. Not going to be a game breaker, but can make an impactful play here or there. And depending on how he's used, can be an asset in coverage. And depending on how that translates, could be a name in all 22 in the back end of your roster. So just want to throw him out there as well. I don't think I would take him above any of these names, but if you know, you're looking for a stretch name at linebacker, that's one. There's not a lot of downside to his game. I think the floor is pretty high there as long as he's kept clean and, and more so used on the outside uh, off the ball. So I'm going to plug him in there. I think somebody we didn't mention that's a hot name is Jeremiah Trotter Jr., um, out of Clemson right. and he's 21 years old, six feet tall, 228 pounds. So like obviously a much smaller linebacker than, than I typically like, which is one of the biggest reasons I didn't mention him, especially because when I watch his film, his biggest strength to me was his blitz ability. And when you're that small, how is that going to translate in the NFL? I also had this feeling watching his film is that most of his big plays, his top plays, his positively graded plays were due to opponent mistakes. And again, that's not something you can really rely on. You can't hang your hat on that. Um, so just like kind of limited from for me as an athlete as well. Um, didn't really know what to think of him. But again, like he's a player I would in the NFL draft, I'd be happy to take a flyer on in the sixth round. Um, that's the kind of range I see him in. But I like because of the name, I think he's going to end up going earlier. You know, you you maybe bet on the lineage, the, you know, the the path to just making him a better athlete than he was in college 21 years old maybe that's there maybe you can unlock that not something i'm willing to bet on in in all 22 draft and then the only other guy that uh kind of a hot name javon solomon out of troy 23 years old 6'1 246 pounds i did watch his film and i'll tell you i did not love it it was not for me he's not the type of linebacker i would take even though 246 pounds definitely more in my wheelhouse than the other guys. I think again, but pass rushing ability above average coverage ability, well below average. So I don't know if that's something I can really just take a shot on NFL draft seventh round pick. Great. Give it to me. But the name is being thrown around. Like he's going to be taken much higher. Uh, I would, I would be reluctant to do so. Yeah. You watch Wallace. I'll watch Solomon um, real quick on, on Trotter jr. You recall the running back episode, we talked about Braille and Allen, and my concern with him was that he can't create on his own. So what am I actually doing here, right? That's Trotter. If if your successful plays are because you, of the opponent's mistakes, I'm sorry, in the NFL, the offense is designed to make the linebacker make the mistake. So that you're you're the one under attack here. It, that's not going to work. It's just not going to work. And, and the frame scares me. Yeah, he was a hot, he was a hot name early and then kind of every every other linebacker kind of came on board. People started watching them and then, you know, it was like, oh, Jeremiah Trotter, He's, it's Jeremiah Trotter. But yeah, I have I have concerns as well. And it's it's one of those I, I let someone else draft him at, at that point. I mean, he may hit he's got the lineage. And I mean, uh, I, I feel like Tr Trotter senior was that type of player more so because he had some knee issues where many teams said, I'll let someone else draft him. And if, and if he becomes successful and they're the hero, then good for them, but it's not my cup of tea. That's how I am with Trotter jr. Uh, you have to be able to create your own success or I want to see you create some of your own success in college because in the NFL, you're going to have to do that because again, you're the one under attack at linebacker in the NFL. Right. Exactly. All right, Ray, we got linebackers under the belt. We have two positions left, corner and safety, that we're going to be reviewing. Our hope is to get those done quickly so that we have a couple weeks before the draft to have some fun and talk about maybe our big boards and actually share those with people, maybe do a mock draft. Maybe uh, we're going to have a surprise guest on that mock draft. We'll see. Just got to keep people interested, right? 
Um, but thank you everyone for tuning in. If you haven't yet, please give us a follow on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at all 22 underscore PFF and give us a review wherever you watch and listen to your podcasts and have a great day. I'm a ghost.